Here is the constellation of the Plough. It's part of a larger constellation called Ursa Major, the Great Bear. You can see here the characteristic plough shape. It's often called the saucepan and the Big Dipper as well. The great thing about this particular constellation is if you follow the line along, it points directly at the North Star, Polaris. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's video. I wanted to talk to you about polar alignment this week and um, I've got my EQ5 Pro mount here um, and I wanted to just quickly show you the latitude and longitude bolts that are on this for adjusting the height and the left to right movement on this particular mount. So we start right here. These are the azimuth bolts and you can see that I'm going to loosen them both. Now you can see that if I turn these it twists the mount and if I turn the opposite one it twists the mount the opposite way. Now these are used to adjust the mount from left to right when you're aligning to Polaris. Now the other ones on this mount are the latitude bolts. Now the first thing to do when adjusting your latitude is to always make sure they are super slack on this side because this one is merely for locking, it's not for adjusting. The one which is for adjusting is the one at the back here. And basically you use that to make the mount go up and down as you can see. Now so often these get bent because people lock these off without knowing that of course once it's locked and you adjust this all it's doing is putting tension on the two bolts and they bend inside. Um, it's a bit of a problem to be honest uh, because you can you can find that these get very easily bent. Now I've upgraded these to slightly better quality um, adjustments, they're all available on eBay um, and basically that just helps with aligning because you're able to have a better quality handle and a better quality uh, bolt. They're not expensive, they're sort of about six pounds on eBay. The other thing I wanted to show you is the polar alignment scope. So this scope here looks through when you open it up looks through here and you can see Polaris in there and that's how you align this to do a rough alignment and on this bit just here you have to make sure that it is properly rotated so that you can actually see through where the scope is. So why do we need an equatorial mount? Well I'm going to draw roughly what's happening so on the Earth, so here's the Earth. On the Earth, uh, and I'm going to draw some dodgy bits of land. Here we go. Okay, so there's the Earth. And the Earth is rotating from west to east across here. And it's spinning across there. And as we look up and we see things like Orion, in the sky, Orion will appear to be moving across the sky, going this way, like that. And in order to compensate for the fact that the Earth is rotating round and Orion appears as a person on the Earth to be going across the sky, we need a telescope which when positioned looking up like this, here's our telescope on a stand, we want it to be able to track in the direction of Orion's movement, but of course it's, it's the Earth's movement that we can see here. So how does, how does an equatorial mount do this for us? Okay, so this time when we take the planet Earth and its axis rotating here on the north and south poles there. And basically, as the Earth rotates round and round, what we need to do is ensure that our telescopes are aligned to this north or south celestial pole. So basically, draw our telescope there. What we want to do is align the mount 
so that it follows exactly the same as the pole. So if I draw these here, and our telescope will sit on top like this, and there's its counterweight, and basically as the Earth rotates round, the telescope has to rotate on the same axis but in the opposite direction, and the same will be true with our telescope here. So as it rotates round, we want it to be able to rotate in the opposite direction. In that way, as the Earth rotates, we're able to compensate for the Earth's rotation with the telescope and therefore track the objects travelling through space. But why do we actually need an equatorial mount when there are other mounts like Alt-As mounts which go up, down, left and right that can also track objects? Well, it's all to do with something called field rotation. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw that. So we've got here our planet Earth again. And this is all the land. So I'm then going to draw Orion again at different places. So there's Orion. And then I'm going to draw Orion here as well. And then I'm going to draw Orion here as well. And what you can see is, from looking at those three Orions at different places, that we have an arc going across, like this, all the way along. Now, an old azimuth mount will follow those perfectly, but it won't follow them in an arc. It will follow them in a box. So, for example, if I was to track Orion starting here, we'd have our, our box there. And you can see uh, Orion is at an angle. And then later on, during the night, our box will be here. And you can see that this time Orion is no longer at an angle. Orion is now straight upright. And then likewise, if I draw our box again, for the final bit, Orion has changed angle again. So this would be the situation that you will be in with an old azimuth mount, because it can only move up and down and left and right on those axes. So if I now change this so that we're using an equatorial mount. So I'm now going to draw it again but with an equatorial mount. So here's Orion. So we have our three Orions here. Now with an equatorial mount it is able to track the angle change of the object as the Earth rotates and the object appears to move. So you can see here that instead of the framing staying flat all the way across, it actually changes the angle of the framing as well. And in this way, the object that you're shooting with your camera doesn't suffer from any field rotation. And that's where an equatorial mount comes in because it's able to not only track the rotation of the Earth and compensate for that, but it's also able to track and compensate for the angle change as the object moves across the sky. There are several ways in which you can polar align. The first is to look through the polar scope on the telescope mount itself. Now I like to use the SciScan app which shows you the exact positioning that Polaris should be in in the polar scope. Now this gives you the coordinates which you are to put into your telescope when you set up the size scan. Now this is only for, for Skywatcher. So when you look through the polar scope on the mount to find Polaris, what you have to do is go into this app and then click the go to Polaris view. And this shows you effectively what you see in the um, polar scope and it shows you exactly where you should be positioning Polaris. So you can see there, it's not actually dead in the centre, it has to be just off slightly. And it can also be changed from the northern or the southern hemisphere. Another method is to use PhD2, which uses a drift alignment method, but I'm not familiar with this one. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. The final one, which I use all the time, is to use a program called SharpCap, 
and I went through the entire sequence on Shark Cap and recorded it and I'm going to show it to you now. So I've just opened Shark Cap. I'm going to select my guide camera, which is the 290C from Altair. Just wait for it to start up. And now I need to go to Tools and Polar Align. We click Next. Okay, so it's now solved and it's telling me to hit the next button before rotating the right ascension. So I'm hitting next. Now it says rotate the right ascension, so that's what I'm going to do. So it tells me that my current polar alignment is poor and I need to adjust it. So it says press next before adjusting. There we go. So it's solved and it tells me I have to go right and up. So I'm now going to adjust those. So at this point I'm adjusting the azimuth bolts and you can see that the numbers for right and left change as I get nearer and nearer the correct positioning for polar alignment. And then I adjust the latitude bolts so that the height of the scope is also being adjusted. And eventually we get really close to being perfect with polar alignment and it begins to report fair when you get very close and then good when you're pretty much on polar alignment and it is possible to get it to excellent but with this particular mount it's um, I've struggled to get the accuracy with it. I've just finished polar aligning using sharp cap and I wanted to show you which controls you use. So here we've got the, the azimuth bolts which you adjust to move the scope between left and right. If we come around here, the only bolt you need for polar aligning is this one here, which changes the latitude, so the height of the actual mount. So the one you need to loosen off is this one here. This basically needs to be loose while you're doing polar alignment. And then when it's aligned, you just lightly, with your finger, you just tighten it up, don't, and that's it. You don't need to put any tightness on it at all. I hope that helps to explain a bit about polar alignment and the different methods you can use. Thanks very much for watching. Mm -hmm.